Retreat to a Nen is here. It's an early access survival game on Steam right now. And I've been playing a bunch of it. So here is my almost world famous obvious tips you should know. If you want to see more of me surviving in the game, then check out the rest of my Let's Plays and live streams. And I'll be back with some more detail guides about some of the more finer mechanics later as well. So don't let the kind of relaxed atmosphere that maybe this game portrays with the meditation fool you. This is a hardcore survival game still. You can die very easily or basically ruin a whole bunch of your playthroughs by not saving efficiently. Even my most obvious tips sometimes hurt how simple and basic they are, but you'd be surprised how often you forget. You need to make a save point and you need to save frequently. This will be the first one and the tutorial takes you through it, but make sure that whenever you go to sleep during the night you save, and in fact you can save at any time of the day that you want. So before you go off exploring, always save. You never know if you run across a rattlesnake or run out of food and water and then you've got to redo another 20 minutes since you last save. In the early stages of the game, sticks are probably the most vital resource. You will need an absolute ton of them to craft base building parts as well as all the different crafting stations. So pick up every single stick that you see. It roughly costs four sticks for pretty much every building piece that you put down a wall or foundation. I'm presuming later on in the game we'll get access to ways to get more wood, but at the moment in the early first few hours, it's definitely about gathering as much of these as can. In Retreat to an end, of course, the spirit meter governs how much you can utilise to pretty much get harder resources like clay or some of the crystal. Now, the idea is that you gather lots of this to hopefully build more stations and more, but definitely in the early stages, I wouldn't worry too much. Maybe get at least maybe 10 clay and then I would say 10 crystal and that will do you until you really need to get any more. Save up that spirit level for running around the map as it also governs your stamina. It does depend on what you're going to be building your first base with. Some parts of the building pieces require a lot of clay, but lots of it requires more stone. And since stone is a lot easier to pick up and find, I would say you want to maybe skip some of that plant stuff that you can build with and go straight to the stone. So you only really need to collect a whole ton of clay if you are going to be going ahead and building out of the plant build pieces. In the early stages, it doesn't seem to be a chest that you can unlock. Instead, you get a basket where you can drop stuff. It is a bit fiddly getting this stuff in there, as you literally will just have to drop it on top, and it'll all be a bit mixed up. But it does mean you can free up your inventory space and hopefully carry more sticks and more fibre. If you explore far enough, you'll find a bunch of places that have got a huge amount of resources, like this cave that has exclusively got a ton of crystal. I will do shorter guides on exactly where to find these. But the areas in Retreat to an End can be quite misleading in terms of where to go and where you've been. So make sure you get a good lay of the land, maybe put something on the floor, fairly easy to craft to recognize where you've been. With seemingly no compass available and no minimap, it definitely adds a little bit extra layer challenge of finding places. Although at least you've got the home sign always once you've put one of the lean-tos down so you can never really get truly lost. But certainly finding other places, always look to the skies and the rock formations. That would be the best way to guess exactly where you're going and what way you've been. You will come across the entrance ways to the other biomes but remember you need to activate three of the ruins in each biome to basically complete the game and I'm pretty sure you have to activate the first three ruined uh, waypoints before you can activate the next area like the Valley of the Giants. The meditation areas they look a little bit different from the regular ones they've got like a gold hue around them so this is what you've got to activate and then yeah you'll be able to progress and also unlock new crafting abilities this is how you get access to more new recipes. Something I struggled with was when I got my campfire going, I couldn't still cook anything on top of it. That's because you still need the cooking pot to actually do so. The fire on its own is only good enough to keep you from hypothermia and stuff, so you do need to make that cooking pot as well. Wherever possible, always make a food recipe rather than eating raw food. For sure, in a pinch, maybe some fruit will keep you alive a few more seconds. But as you can see, you get a huge amount of benefits from cooking food, so you've got to prepare stuff a little bit better. There is actually a wide variety of fruits in the game, but in the early stages, I only kind of find these kinds of fruits, and then maybe star fruits on the actual bushes, and then actually bananas if you look high enough too. You'll also find mushrooms, of course, and yeah, the potatoes. So pretty much gather all the plants that you can. The anen plant is particularly useful as that's what you're gonna need to make a antibody to poison that you get from the rattlesnakes. And that's pretty much the only real big danger in the early stages other than running out of food or water. 
Last thing I will say though also about cooking food is make sure you've got plenty of wood underneath it. You normally have to make sure it's 100% if you go to sleep and leave something to cook overnight, otherwise you will find that it's stopped cooking halfway through. There's nothing worse than waking up to find your ham and eggs hasn't been cooked after a good night's sleep. So this is a rattlesnake encounter and you can see they're pretty deadly. They will take a good few hits with a spear that you craft before they're actually dead. And you can see it right next to the and then flower, which we're gonna need for the antidote now. So I did this for science just to see what would happen. And obviously don't forget also to get the carcasses from not only this creature, but of course all the dead creatures that you spear or hunt. Now you can make flasks when you unlock them once you've discovered some more of the proper waypoints around the map and these will give you the ability to hold some of these potions on you so you don't have to worry about being caught short. Otherwise you can still just go ahead and make the antiseptic in the cook pot and drink it straight away and that will cure you. I would say make sure you've got at least four and then flowers at all times just in case you have run over the rattlesnakes. They're fairly hard to see especially in the deep growth. Your quantum device can be used to get rid of any crafting stations that you've placed so you want to put them somewhere else or make adjustments to any of your builds. You will lose some of the resources, you only gain a limited amount back. So that in mind, make sure you don't do what I did. I thought I'd give myself plenty of space and I've done this a bunch of times. I put my crafting stations down first and then decided to place the walls. But the stone walls particularly are quite chunky so you might have a hard time actually placing them in the right spot. It seems pretty obvious to go ahead and build a base first and then place your stuff inside, but I like to get my stuff off the ground as soon as possible. So yeah, do make sure you give yourself plenty of space or indeed you've built your base first before moving in all of your crafting stations. If it moves, you can pretty much kill it and get some meat from it. So make sure you get plenty of meat as well, as this is one of the better resources for replenishing your health and keeping that food bar high. Make sure you craft the water container as quickly as possible as this will give you fresh water that hasn't been tainted by any microbes. The tutorial will tell you to go and drink some fresh water and you should be safe enough to drink it from any of the little areas that you find. But after that you get to get a risk of poisoning or getting a pathogen. So make sure yeah, you get a water container to get fresh water. And the first chance you get, yeah, make sure you've crafted a couple of flasks. Although there are two things you need to know, there's actually two different types of flask. Well, one is pretty much just a jug, and that's to help grow your own plants in a planter so you can water them every day. So do make sure you actually craft the flask itself as that's the one that you can actually take the antidotes and actually store them for later. I think I made it pretty clear that sticks are really useful. Obviously, you're gonna be using them a lot to craft and build bases. One thing to say though is that with the base building itself, you won't necessarily need it as much as you would think in the early stages. You're probably better off just having a camp with some crafting stations around, rather than devoting too much time just to picking up sticks. You will unlock more advanced building pieces where you might need obsidian and more as well, and you'll find big caves with lots of these deposits in too. Now the resources do respawn, you will get fresh sticks pretty much I think after two days of actually surviving, although I seemingly found some after one day, that's the advice I got from the Discord ages ago, and rocks should respawn after one day as well. But yeah, make the crafting stations and focus on them first. Although yes, you may dismantle them later and lose some resources, I still think it's better to get all the crafting stations built as much as possible to see what they do, experiment and test out what features they have before really going too close or too hard on building. Remember, there are three current biomes in the early access launch, so there's plenty of spaces that you might find the perfect base location also. Of course, there are other dangers in retreat to an end, like wolves and bears, but in the early stages of the game at least, like I said, it should only be rattlesnakes that you really have to worry about. Some of the other biomes are going to be cold based, so you're going to need plenty of armour to keep you warm when going and exploring some of them. And I do believe, I think that's where you'll find some of the more harder enemies, like the wolves and bears. And there we go, just some real basic pointers about Retreat to an End. Look out for more advanced guides from me and hopefully a bit better graphics. I did notice that some of my settings were a bit off in some of this footage, so apologies for that. But hopefully it's give you a heads up. Check out Let's Play, like I said, and live streams, and I'll be back for more very soon. Bye-bye.